Hey all, so yes, uh, I'm good. This is gonna be part two of, uh, of a demo that uh, that we started last month. Um, and um, just to reemphasize, uh, this demo is basically a, we just took all of this guide that we've developed, right? Like, a, and just a quick reminder where to find them if you go into our docs. On the left nav, integration guides underneath that, you go using red expectations with AWS. And the guide that we've been working off of is uh, the great expectations using S3 and Pandas. Uh, in part one, we went through setting up steps, setting, making sure that we had all the requirements, setting up the different stores, et cetera. Uh, and then we're going to spend all of this time going from part two uh, all the way to the bottom until we can see our docs and the validations ready. Uh, and uh, then for that, we're going to uh, do it all through a, a Jupyter notebook. Um, and just to be clear, every uh, all the code in the Jupyter notebook, uh, it, it was taken from this guide. So it's not I, I'm not introducing any new and novel concepts that are not already in this guide, but it's just to make it in a very concise and very easy to show way, right? So. <clears throat> Uh, give me one second. Okay. Oops. One second. And also, uh, we are going to be um, including uh, this uh, uh, this notebook for your reference. Uh, if look for a, a link uh, to the file in the email recap, it will send the email recap sometimes later this week. So look for the links uh, for the notebooks that we're gonna be showing off today uh, about this um, uh, uh, yeah, about this demo. So that way, again, if you want some heads up, uh, you know, like not heads up, <laughs> if you want a leg up on your getting started with this guide, you can look at a reference as well. Uh, so let's get started. So first and foremost, some boilerplate imports and some things that will be needed down the line. Uh, and um, and I think to note in this in this uh, document, in this uh, notebook, I'm including some links to documentations and some descriptions of what I'm doing. Um, and uh, you know that I also provide some distinctions of the different things that you might want to do and the difference uh, in the configurations that you might want to add as well. Um, and <clears throat> I'm not sure exactly why Python is taking so long uh, to process these inputs, but all right, that's done. So we get the context uh, from that. And then after that, then we're gonna uh, uh, create a data source via a YAML config, but we're really using the programmatic way, uh, which is basically a declaration of YAML within your uh, Python code. Uh, the important things to notice here is uh, that the data connector and uh, the, the data where we're grabbing that, this is gonna be our bucket in AWS S3. Um, and then uh, and the type of files that we want to grab from there and the data assets. Um, so we just make sure that it's all right. Um, and this is a very important sanity check that we have here uh, that we have in the tool. Um, this is not just gonna check that the syntax is valid, but basically it's gonna check the whether um, the data sources that you think you have and, and that you think you have correctly configured actually work. Um, and then, um, a, you know, this is always a good thing that, that we provide these methods. So that way that you can test your configuration and your assumptions as you go. So you don't have to find any surprises down the line. Uh, so here we can see the two files that we have in that bucket uh, that we have right here. Um, and then once you are convinced or that you are uh, that this is exactly what you want, then we're going to go ahead and go ahead and tell uh, your expectations to save that uh, uh, data source in its in its context. Uh, after that, right? Like uh, you know, so we now we have the data. Now we need to have it in a form so that way we can validate it. And then the way that we use this is uh, through batch requests. Uh, there's different. There there's no like a couple of times, different types of data uh, batch requests. For this time, we're gonna use a runtime batch request because of the, the ability that it gives us to specify the things that we want for this demo. Uh, and uh, again, like in this, uh, we're providing require like the data source, the name, this is the data source that we defined in part one of this demo. Uh, and this is uh, the connector name is what we, we created right here. 
in the configuration above. Uh, and then this is just an arbitrary name that we want to give this uh, asset name. Um, and then the runtime parameters, you can, we're just specifying a path here for that one file, just for the sake of this example, you could provide, you know, like if it's a number of files that are different batch, et cetera, right? Um, so we're going to create that batch holder. And then, uh, you know, by itself, it's not particularly useful. Now we need to marry a, a few different things, a few different concepts here, right? Like, so we, now we have, okay, we have the data and we have the batches that we want the batches of data that we want to run validations on. So now we need to create the validations, right? And the way that we do this is gonna be via expectations. Uh, you know, like expectations are sort of like the language the great expectations use uh, to validate, you know, assumptions or, or uh, versus reality, you know, and, and making sure that uh, things are honest all the way. And so uh, then like, you know, first we're gonna create an empty test suite. We're just gonna give it a name, uh, an arbitrary name or whatever is convenient to you. Uh, and then we're going to get a, a validator from the context. And then that validator is going to be uh, primed with the batch request and the expectation suite that we just created above, right? Uh, and then in this statement right here, the validator head, um, this is, again, a sanity check. You don't need to have this in your code, but we also we like to emphasize the, the, the incremental nature of as you're configuring things and figuring out the uh, great expectations to make sure that everything is working as you expect, right? So we're going to go ahead and create that and we get the validator, right? And this is going to give us the first five rows of whatever data source you gave it. Um, and um, in this case, because, you know, like a, that's just the way that we're providing it to. in uh, here, you can take a glance at your data, you know, the first five rows, whatever, right? And then, you know, after you have validator, then we can add expectations based on that, right? Like you observed, for instance, the passenger count, right? Like it cannot be null. Uh, and then, or ideally, you want expect, uh, passenger count never to be null. So you add, you add that expectation that exists here, right? Um, same with the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the surcharges, right? Like we want to make sure that it's not a negative amount. We need to know that it's also, we need to make sure that the data is not between, you know, $1,000 for, uh, for the congestion search. It, it just doesn't make any sense. Right. So, but just like that, you could add any of the expectations that we have that we offer, uh, you know, as the core expectations, and then you can other augment that with your own expectations as well. Uh, and um, so we create right, this calculate the metrics, etc. And this just gives you like a quick validate, uh, you know, of the, the things that are created for you. Uh, and then um, we're going to go ahead and save that expectation suite. The expectation suite is going to include those two things that we just those two um, expectations that we added, right? Uh, next up is just we create a checkpoint, right? Checkpoints as is, is like a, a mental and in, uh, in also a programmatic abstraction, so to speak, uh, for uh, having a, a like a point in time uh, where we get the validations and we take actions on those validations, right? Like uh, it, and what happens to them and to the results of those, right? So we're going to create, uh, there's different checkpoints that you may use and depending on the complexity of your use case, you might have, you know, different actions, custom uh, things that you might want to do. Uh, but for the sake of this example, we're going to go with a simple checkpoint, which is the simplest one to use, simple ones to configure, uh, just simply provide a name and, um, and a run template that is the minimum configuration that you can have. Um, and then you're going to get add, you know, you have the config ag, and then this is just going to tell us, hey, yeah, you have the configuration, but like there's nothing connected to it logically. Um, so then basically we're just going to add it to the context. Now remember in the context, we have the validators, we have the batch request, and we have the data assets that we have configured thus far. Um, and then it's same as validation results, uh, data docs, et cetera, right? So now we have this uh, actual configuration ready to use. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and run it, right? We're going to run the checkpoint with the, the, the batch request that we gave, the expectation suite that we have, and it's going to run, go ahead and run it for us. Uh, this is also, uh, by the way, this uh, in the checkpoint, just because as you can see, we have like the store validation results and updated data docs, that checkpoint is going to go ahead and create uh, and store in S3. Uh, this is why it's taking, it seems like, oh, well, it's just two exceptions. Why is it taking so long? It's because it's really generating those uh, results and pushing them to S3, right? Uh, and it's also pushing the data docs as well into S3. Uh, and then that's it. I mean, like right now we can just go ahead to open this and then we're going to see the data that we just run right here. And then the results, the two expectations that we want, the condition search and the passenger count and exactly what we we're expecting from that data.
And um, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, again, that's it for the demo. Again, a reminder, we have these wonderful guides that we created. Uh, we call them in Golden Path, or you can call them uh, deployment patterns, whichever way you want to call them. They're end-to-end, -end, very comprehensive guides. Uh, uh, in this particular, uh, the main topic is AWS. We hope to expand that to other things. But for now, you know, like these are wonderful places to get started and to develop your uh, muscle and um, actually develop your, your whole solution uh, for various expectations if this happens to fit your face from zero all the way to the, to the when you can see data docs. And uh, pass turn, cut. All right. Thanks, Ruben. Appreciate that. Um, I believe so. Next, we have, oh, and, and if, if people have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Uh, Ruben can answer them while he's not presenting, which will only be for a few minutes. Uh, otherwise, you know, we can always follow up uh, in, in, in Slack. Uh, 